Hi, this is Dan Abin. I'm making this video for our CAD graphics and our print reading class at Southern Maine Community College to make it clear to people who are a little having a little trouble visualizing it how this ASME illustration relates to an actual part. This is what we use um, to talk about line types because that's what the American Society of Mechanical Engineers has placed in the ASME Y14.5 standard on technical graphics to illustrate the various line types. It's actually the Y14.3, sorry. At any rate, um, but people have sometimes had a little difficulty sort of visualizing what this is. So what I've done is created a model on the left-hand side that represents this. And just to start off with, all that jagged edge, that is not actually the edge of a part. This is the upper left-hand corner of a piece of equipment that is much larger than what's being shown. But the rest of the equipment is not of any necessity as far as showing what the, what the um, uh, how the attachment goes for this uh, swing arm. So as a result, what we do is use a break line, that line right there, to crop this view into what's called broken view. That break line is a thick line. It represents sort of the, the imaginary edge of a part that's been broken away. So that's what I've done over here is kind of duplicated that. So what you're looking at right now is an assembly. And I've color coded each of the pieces. So one of the pieces is that bronze color. And that would be a cast iron piece that this whole swing arm attaches to. You take a look at it, it's hollow, but it also has this thick part right here that's cylindrical. And that thick part is there so that a shaft, and that's what the uh, magenta item is, a shaft can go through it and be supported without breaking the part. The shaft has a swing arm associated with it, and that swing arm is held onto the shaft with a tapered pin, which is what that green pin is right there. The part also has some features over here, and the feature over here is what would be called a raised boss, and that boss is a surface that's been machined, so something is going to be attached here. And those two little holes are alignment holes, so there'll be two pins in whatever goes in here. And it shows that um, on the left-hand side. If we look at this from the front, this is what the view looks like when you look over here. If you take a look at this place that you have the, the line type that it's got a double break, or a double segment and three breaks, that's known as a phantom line. And what that's showing you is this swing arm can be here. It can also be here. And in that position, that's the location represented by that phantom line. And, it's, and the reason for doing that is to make it clear that there's only one swing arm. If we were to draw that with object lines, it would look like there were two arms on it. So this is what we have, something that is capable of going from this position to this position. Now, if you look up here, that hidden line right there, that hidden line represents the wall thickness of this part. So if we look up inside, you can see there's a wall thickness here, and I might be a little easier to see if I do this. There's a wall thickness here, and the edge of that surface right there is being shown as a hidden line right here. So if we looked at this again from the front, and I asked SolidWorks to display that with hidden lines, Unfortunately, it's going to display them with tangent edges as well. We'll talk about that a little more later. But that single line you see right there represents the surface, the hidden surface. And it comes down and goes around just like this does. Although, looking at this, I think I made that a little too big when I made it. It should be about the same size as that hub based on how that's drawn. But that hidden line represents that this part is a hollow part with a wall thickness. Let me go back to that view. Look at this end right here, it's called a viewing plane line, and that means you walk over to this side and look in that direction. Well, walking over to that side and looking in that direction means walking around to here, you'd be looking straight down at it. The point of that is to show you what this surface looks like. That surface right there is represented in the drawing over here as what's called a removed view. The viewing plane line, which looks like the cutting plane line, is a thick line with arrowheads, and it's a way of saying, listen, I want to show you what that looks like without drawing an entire view on that side. And maybe there's not room on that side. So you do a remove view by showing the BB. That's reflected down here in the labeling. That's view BB. And that's what it would look like there. If I look at it from the front again, those hidden lines right here, they represent the bottom of that hole. And if we swing around, you could probably just tell that the bottom of that hole is pointed. It's got a conical point. That's because it was done with a drill, and a drill has a point that's conical, and it comes down in. 
So those hidden lines represent the edges of that hole and the point at the end. The center line just represents the axis of the hole. Now over here you've got a section that is cut away that arm and that cutaway section, that's a viewing uh, a cutting plane line, that cutaway section is shown down here to show you the shape of the arm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this whole part up. I'm going to cut it up in such a way that you'll see what I'm talking about with that hole. So if I slice down through this, the edge of that would be visible. The hidden lines are used because you can't actually see it. Keep coming out. The pin that I indicated earlier, the tapered pin that holds that on, that would look like this. It goes in through the hub, goes through the shaft, comes out the other end, and it's tapered so you can tap it in. It'll stay put a little longer than um, the, the hub itself, so you can also tap it out again. That's a very secure, tapered pin is an extremely secure way to attach things together. Now if we keep coming out, you notice I can't really tell what the cross section of that is, but I could if I were to swing that around like this. Now the cross section of that part right there, a little bit further, the cross section of that part is that elliptical shape you see right here. And when you represent something as though it had been cut, you have to show with some section lines that that is a surface that in fact has been cut. I'll come back over here and we'll look at it from the front again. And I'll turn off the uh, section and we'll go back to having it look like that. So now we've got that swing arm, it goes back and forth. And the only other thing over here that we're being shown that really can't be represented here is that chain line. All that chain line means is this. If we were to go all the way up here, there's some kind of treatment that has been applied or something that, that, that applies to that entire surface of that cylinder all the way around. I don't know what that treatment would be in this particular case. I think it's unlikely with a cast part like this that you would actually like machine it or grind it or anything else. But let's just say for whatever reason it had to be coated with something. So if it had to be coated all the way around, that chain line shows the location of that coating. That's the way to interpret the line type drawing over here um, based on a, an actual part.